It's all about Carlo Matkovic, who figuratively and literally stood out for the Pelicans in their third summer league game. I'll tell you why if he plays like that, the Pelicans will have actually upgraded at the center position. It's the Wednesday episode of Locked on Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked on Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. Here with y'all on this Wednesday, day after the Pelicans win their first summer league game, 80, um, sorry, they lost actually, 90 to 85. They did not win that one. They kind of had a push at the end and then played the foul game, 90 to 85. But the result doesn't matter because we saw kind of maybe a breakout performance from Pelicans big man, newest signee, Carlo Makovic, looking frankly fantastic. And if he plays like he did, and we're going to really break down this game, the Pelicans might have upgraded the center position because he did some things here that no one was able to do for New Orleans last season. So we're going to break it down in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. And of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. So please subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Join over 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube. So I was, I literally did what Friday show kind of being skeptical about Carlo Matkovich. And then on Monday I go, wait, okay. The two performances in summer league were a little bit eye-opening for me. And after this third game, where he played exceptionally well, I might be a Carlo crazy at this point. Like, I'm really coming around on this guy, and frankly, I was just wrong on him. I'm a big, like, skeptical until you prove it guy. I think he's actually proven it. And you know my usual caveat with Summer League? It's Summer League. He's not playing against NBA-level competition. I don't even know if this is as good as the G League, to be perfectly honest with you. It might be worse than that. But he did some things here that make it, he just stood out, right? Like, that's the best way to put it. Let's kind of get into his overall play, right? Like, he looked really polished in this game. And I think he adds a dimension to New Orleans they don't have in another big man. Finished with 25 points on the night on 11 of 13 shooting. He missed just two shots. Two of three from deep. One of two from the line. Five rebounds, an assist a steal, three blocks, just one turnover, six fouls. Don't read too much into that. He looked good. He did everything you kind of want from a prototypical big man here and someone that would fit right into New Orleans, right? He spaced the court, made his threes. Great. Led the team in rebounds with some physical play at times, like battling four boards. Then there was the rim protection, three blocks. He's got some you know, professional playing experience, some G League experience. Now, he should look more polished than all of these other guys. And if you go back to that Summer League preview show I did when I was talking about Eve Misi, the Pelicans' other center here that we're looking at, I said it's really tough for a big man to stand out or play well in Summer League. It's just not really conducive for them because the guard play is largely subpar. And big men need guards to get him the ball. So it's one thing to play the NBA with a lead guard like DeJounte Murray. And if you watch this game, stayed up late to watch this game. Imagine DeJounte Murray in him out there in the level of play that then it increases with all of that. But Carlo made it really easy on the Pelicans guards and everyone there. You know, the biggest thing was him in the pick and roll and being a lob threat. And the Pelicans, if you go to the NBA.com slash stats site, and this backs up the eye test, Didn't run a ton of pick and roll plays for their big men last year, right? Like it was a lot of get the ball to Zion, let him do work, but there wasn't a ton of pick and roll action. You didn't see Ingram and Zion in the pick and roll very often and Zion finishing plays like that, partially because he's undersized. Jonas Valanciunas is more of a post-up big man than a pick and roll big man. Not a good roller to the rim, anything like that. Doesn't have the vertical spacing. Karl Makovic does all of that. Acted as a lob threat in both regular pick and rolls and then short pick and rolls that originate around the free throw line. And being that lob threat and rolling hard to the rim opens things up. So one, 
you saw guards looking for him just on the lob throw. They were actually looking for Misi too, and that was a good thing to see. But Makovic just made it easy on them, just being bigger. You know, he's got good size at six foot eleven. Really good athleticism from him as well, getting up high to flush some of those down. And you saw it whether it was lob threats in the pick and roll, finishing plays. And, and dunks after a block, all of that, he just added a level of athleticism and polish that you're probably not going to see from Eve Misi just yet. And that athleticism you didn't have from Jonas Valanciunas last season. And then it made things easy on everyone else. And I don't mean just as a play finisher. Look at what him being a threat in the pick and roll did for someone like Jordan Ford, who found tons and tons of space in the lane, whether it's for a floater or to get to the rim. And Jordan Ford off the bench finished with 19 points on 8 of 10 shooting. He looked really good kind of as that secondary guy when he was out there with Carlo Makovic. And so this adds a dimension that the Pelicans haven't had in a minute here. I don't know if Carlo's going to be the starter, if it'll be Daniel Tice. I don't think it'll be Eve Misi just yet. And I think right now, if you had to pick somebody... There could be changes coming down the line. It looks like it would be Matkovich, like pretty easy, right? Like that's really what I'm starting to kind of get the sense of. And when you look at his play, you could run him in the pick and roll with Zion Williamson. Imagine him as the finisher for a guy like DeJounte Murray. Even CJ McCollum would benefit from someone like him. This was just the type of option that the Pelicans did not have last season. And more than that, there's some playmaking in him too. So if the shot's not there at the rim, he can pass out of it. And so the ability to keep the ball moving, be a play finisher, along with rebounding pretty well in this game, all of that kind of screams some things here. And again, caveat of it being summer league, but it's not easy for big men to truly look like this. And... This makes me pretty excited. Like, I I had this one wrong on Friday. Now, I said they might sign him, but I wasn't expecting this level of play. And again, it's summer league. Keep that in mind, right? Jackson Hayes looked like an all-world player. So did Nikhil Alexander-Walker. They really struggled during the regular season. He's not going up against the level of competition. Some of those roles aren't going to be there for him at the NBA level that they were here in summer league. But you know, what you're looking for with him, and this is where he kind of answered that, is he moved well. He knew when to roll. He rolled hard, too. Those are the type of things that you can do. You can find space in the defense. You might not be able to finish plays over guys that don't jump or don't have the court awareness to contest you, but can you move to at least get in position? If it's contested, it's contested, but at least you're doing the thing. And that is what Carlo Makovic was doing out there on the court in this game. He was eye-openingly good. Now, keep in mind that we've seen performances like this before. This, again, I, you've got to put it on. I'm not ready to declare that he's going to be a good starter, anything like that, right? Like a couple of years ago, a year ago, two years ago, was it John Butler had a perfect scoring game for the Pelicans in Summer League, going six of six from three among some other shots. He didn't end up working out you know, at the NBA level at all. So there's still that like a little bit of skepticism, but this was an eye-opening performance and something that should make us pretty excited here if you're a fan of the New Orleans Pelicans because he would fit in next to Zion Williamson. He would fit in with DeJounte Murray. And that is exactly the type of guy that the Pelicans needed. So maybe David Griffin wasn't lying when he said, we're pretty happy with the guys that we have at the center position. So Carlo Makovic was definitely a bit of a revelation in this game. A couple players you weren't, were guys we wanted to see maybe a little bit more from. Jordan Hawkins struggled shooting in this one. Eve Misi had a couple of nice plays, but looked a little bit lost out there. And then Antonio Reeves couldn't shoot. Let's break down what we saw from them. And then we're going to talk about a name that I think would be a good addition to the team in Lonnie Walker the fourth. That's coming up here next couple of segments in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by Game Time. Look, it's the summer, and that means if you're traveling around, maybe you want to check out a Major League Baseball game. They just had the All-Star break. The games are going to be coming back. I'm traveling to Los Angeles, so I'm going to be sure to check out a Dodger game, and I'm going to get my tickets on Game Time because they are an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. And what's great is prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. So if you're looking for something to do last minute, Major League Baseball, but they also have more comedy, theater, concerts, and more, 
Get on the Game Time app, whatever your city you're in, New Orleans or elsewhere, you're going to find fun things to do and cheap prices and good prices to do it at with the Game Time app. And if you want to buy early, that's fine too. With the Game Time guarantee, they will credit you 110% of the difference if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. So you get peace of mind with buying tickets through Game Time. So take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On NBA, L O C K E D O N N B A for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. So please subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Join over 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube as well. And tell a friend about the show. Convert some new Carlo crazies to the mix here after that performance in Summer League. We're going to keep going five days a week for the foreseeable future. May drop it to three days a week once, you know, at the end of this month. We'll see. But this is going to be, hopefully, a fun and interesting Pelican season. There's no reason to think it's not going to be. So please, subscribe to Lockdown Pelicans wherever you get your podcast, the number one Pelicans podcast. And now for your second listen, Ross Jackson, host of Lockdown Saints. Make him your second listen today. He'll be there in Irvine for training camp, giving you the boots on the ground perspective. So let's get into a couple of other summer league performances here. And let's start with Jordan Hawkins. The guy was going to be the leader of the team struggling again to shoot. He just doesn't do well in summer league. He did not play particularly well in summer league last year. And he was fine during his rookie year. And he did some things that I liked from him in this game. But the shooting just wasn't there. 0 for 4 from 3. 3 of 6 from the line. Including one free throw that what would have tied it or made it a 1 point game. Finished with seven points on two of eight shooting. It was pretty disappointing overall. Had a couple of offensive fouls on like his leg kick out too, which they're going to call almost every single time. Those weren't ones that were like borderline. They're going to call that even if I don't think there was like any like malicious intent behind it or anything. Honestly, I did think his defense was pretty good. He had three steals in this one and was active on that side of the ball. And that is what he said he's working the most on in summer league. So You know, from that perspective, I think it's been fine. He's showing effort there. You're seeing good size from him too. And again, he plays bigger than he is and contested shots well. You know, it's weird that he wasn't credited with blocks, even though I thought he had like one or two. Maybe it was kind of like borderline or just forced the miss, whatever it might be. He did a good job on the defensive side of the ball. We want to see the shooting from him, but like, I don't know. We know he's a good shooter, so I'm not overly worried about it. You know, he had a fine regular season, I thought. You know, not amazing, but fine. That's what you expect from him. Drafted 14 overall. You know, Antonio Reeves also struggled to shoot in this one. 3 of 8 from the field, 0 for 2 from 3. But moved the ball pretty well, I thought. 4 assists from him. He finished with 8 points. Again, 8 points on 8 shots isn't great. He's a second-round pick. You know, he'll... he'll I'm assuming they'll sign him to that second round minimum exception deal, or maybe they'll put him on a two-way. We'll see. But he's going to spend some time with the G League. Like, I don't see him getting significant minutes right now at the NBA level. Again, a guy that I'm pretty high on as a depth piece, kind of end of bench guy. I think he'll be able to fill that role out pretty nicely for an NBA career, which, look, for someone taking where he was, that's not bad whatsoever. We'll see if they end up kind of giving him more minutes. We'll see if they shut down someone like, Carlo or someone else and that allows Antonio Reeves to really step forward in this kind of roster and kind of have a chance to shine and maybe you want to kind of like shift the focus to them a little bit towards the end of summer league we'll see what they end up doing there the other guy though that we were really looking at was Eve Misi here not the best night for him only playing just you know 15 minutes in this game here He was in foul trouble, and that's kind of my big concern for him. You know, two of seven from the field, you know, had some nice activity early on, but kind of faded as the game went on and wasn't able to really make his presence felt. Four fouls in just 15 minutes is not great. That was my concern when they drafted him. Would he be able to kind of defend right away at the NBA level? And I don't know if he's there just yet. I mean, it's a third summer league game. You don't want to read too much into it. You know, but that was an area that you wanted to kind of really see him impact things a little bit more. And you saw the block shot, so you see the athleticism. There are a couple of good rebounds from him, too. He took a jumper, which I don't mind him taking. It's Summer League. Why not, though? 
Um, it, it did not go well, we could say. That's putting it mildly. You know, the one thing that stands out from for me with him through his play in summer league when there's been some struggles has been the ball movement and some of the passing and his ability to dribble. He can be a mobile big, and I think that's going to be an important thing. The ball doesn't just stop when it gets to his hands. It doesn't just, you know, hit his hands. and He doesn't know what to do with it. The hands are actually pretty good. We saw improvement from game one to game two, so I'm sure he'll be able to learn from this and we'll see some improvement in game four as well. And then wherever the Pelicans end up in game five, whoever they play and whatever they do with that one, it was going to always be a project. So the emergence, let's call it for at least right now, of Carlo Matkovic, I think is a really important thing um, that it takes some of the pressure off of Eve Misi to be able to just kind of like work on things. It's okay. You know, again, I don't read too, too much into summer league because we've been here before, you know, I've been doing this for almost 15 years now and you've seen some really good standout performances. And then these guys don't end up doing much at the NBA level or even in the G league too. So kind of keep a grain of salt when it comes to like really good performances, though. I do agree that Carlos stood out, but even when players struggle, it's a grain of salt. I'm not going to read too much into it as well. A couple of y'all, Wanted to hear about Jordan Ford. Liked what we saw from him in this game. You know, the scoring was there. I thought he, like, fit into the offense well. You know, I thought he did a good job of just kind of fitting in and doing what you want to see from him and had a very nice game. Like, it was really as simple as as that. And so, you know, for a guy that has some experience with, you know, the Sacramento Kings and all of that. Like, I do like what we saw from him, you know, with the G League last year. And I do think that he can do a pretty decent job, you know, in summer. Like, I don't know if he's a guy that's going to get, like, significant minutes at the NBA level or if he's just kind of more of a, of a summer league guy here. That's kind of the feel that I get from him. You know, we'll talk about filling out the end of the roster here. Could they go with him if he keeps playing well? Like, yeah, potentially, I think. But I also do think there's other options that just kind of make more sense at the NBA level. But he did a very good job in this one. And I'm curious to watch more of him play. And I liked how he fit alongside Makovic in this game. By the way, shout out to Pelicans Summer League head coach Aaron Miles. Had a bunch of really great ATO plays, including one for Jordan Hawkins to almost tie it at the end of the game off of that inbound where I forget who caught the ball on like a curl along the baseline where you thought the play was going to be for him. And then you had Jordan Hawkins moving off ball, off and off ball screen to catch that pass. That was a pretty great play. They had one earlier to Jordan Ford who got kind of a give and go off an inbound pass to get a bucket that kept them in it. His time was kind of running down. I don't look, they lost their for three here, whatever I thought they did pretty well. And I don't really care at this point, kind of about the summer league, scores and things like that so was happy with what we saw overall from the pelicans here particularly because carlo makovic kind of broke out here pelicans had 54 points in the paint compared to just 26 for the san antonio spurs here makovic off the bench really kind of a, a difference maker pelicans could not shoot from 3 4 13 whereas you saw the san antonio spurs go 13 for 31 there's a significant difference there that was the difference in the game but it's summer league. doesn't matter. Win-loss would have been nice, but whatever. Not a big deal. So if the Pelicans want to improve their actual roster for next season, they basically have one open spot. I have a guy that I would like to see them potentially go out and sign, and that's Lonnie Walker. And I'll tell you why coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. So please subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Join over 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube as well, and are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day long? Do you have to turn down the volume without all that yelling? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the yelling. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So we're going to wrap up the show kind of getting into the roster here for the New Orleans Pelicans. They have one open roster spot. If we assume they're going to give Antonio Reeves a 
two way or not a two way, sorry, a second round minimum contract. And we'll get into the cap ramifications of that here in a second. They essentially just have one open roster spot. And after signing Carlo Makovic, they are in the luxury tax. They are in there at this point in time by about, where did the, my cap numbers go here? I want to say it was like two, a, a little over $260,000. So not an extreme amount. But once you sign Reeves to say a $1.2 million contract, something along those lines, and maybe that's why they're going to try and put him on a two-way to avoid the, the luxury tax hit that goes with that, puts him about $1.4 million into it. And I think that's fine. That gives them about $4 million, $4.2 million or so, somewhere in that range, to spend before they hit this, the first apron. They could be cheap and try and dodge the luxury tax. I will criticize them, I promise you, if that's the case. I think they've just got to pay it this season because I do think there's a guy that would actually add some maybe much-needed depth for the New Orleans Pelicans. And, you know, if you're looking to still try and improve the roster, I think there's a couple of guys that could do it, right? We'll look at another one in tomorrow's show. Would a guy like Robert Covington make a ton of sense? I think less so than Lonnie Walker the fourth, you know, who's a guard. And maybe the Pelicans just want some more depth if they're a little bit nervous about someone like Jordan Hawkins or they just want a little bit more experience. Last season for the Brooklyn Nets playing 58 games, 9.7 points per game on 38% shooting from three. For his career, you know, he's a 36% shooter from three on like middle middle volume, 4.7 attempts last season. You know, if you give him bigger minutes and he's played, you know, a bigger role with the San Antonio Spurs at times, you know, he's looked like he could be somewhat of a pretty good role player. You know, per 36 minutes, that jumps to almost 10 three-point attempts per game on the minutes he played per game last season. Those are those are decent numbers. And he's, you know, an above-average defender, not an elite defender, but someone that I do think could add some nice depth to this Pelicans team, you know, as your two-guard. Something along those lines could be a spot starter for you should that need arise, and I don't think it really will at this point in time. You know, it would mean the Pelicans go deeper into the luxury tax, but this is a move that I do think I'd like to see. He's a former guy that was picked just outside of the lottery. His career numbers are 9.8 points per game, 2.3 rebounds, one and a half assists with decent defense and a, uh, one and a half threes made per game. I think that could be a useful player as an end of bench fill out guy. I don't think it's a necessary move that the Pelicans need to make, but if you're going to pay the luxury tax, Signing him on a veteran minimum deal, which is all he would get at this point in time, I really don't hate that idea whatsoever. I want to see this team be as competitive as possible. And if you don't think that there's going to be a big move for Brandon Ingram coming right now, getting a guy like Lonnie Walker, I think, could add some like real good end of bench depth. Does it replace kind of what Najee Marshall gave you and his size on the wing? No, it doesn't. But it gets you somewhat close somewhat close he's like you know slightly undersized but not horrifically i think that could be a good move given that you know the pelicans have the roster spot and they might want to keep it open in case they make a lopsided trade or something like that later down the line and we'll see you know brain and ingram for jared allen and one other player on the cavaliers like fixes that roster spot problem could also save you a little bit of money too and get you under the luxury tax so maybe there's no need to do this move right now but signing him, I do think, could be a smart deal for the New Orleans Pelicans to fill out that depth. Again, be competitive. The West is really good here. And also, it takes away a guy that maybe other teams would sign. He's played for the Lakers before. They've swung and missed and struck out on everybody that they've tried to get. He wasn't horrible for the Lakers. Wasn't good for the Lakers, but wasn't horrible for the Lakers. So maybe it would be a smart thing to try and take a piece off the board for another you know, uh, competitor seeing Gary Trent Jr. Go to the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves to the Milwaukee Bucks, you know, takes away someone from the Lakers and other teams too. I think this is something that could be a smart move for the Pelicans is just a little bit of insurance to injuries or something like that, or, you know, maybe put some pressure or get some insurance for a guy like Jordan Hawkins, depending on the struggles that he potentially could have, though we hope he doesn't. You know, and I think that means you don't need to rely on Antonio Reeves to play a bigger role when maybe he's not ready for that sort of thing just yet. 
Do you like the idea of Lonnie Walker the fourth? Do you think there's someone else in the free agent market that the Pelicans should sign? Let me know in the comments down below on YouTube and what you think. Also, are you now officially a Carlo crazy? I'm being converted here. Sorry for being late, late to everything here. Jumping on the bandwagon, though. We'll be talking more about him, certainly, for the rest of Summer League here on the Locked On Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Pelicans. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. I'll be back with y'all tomorrow to look at an off the kind of beaten path center option. DeAndre Ayton for the Pelicans. Does that make sense? Is that the direction they should go? Or do you just want to roll with Carlo Makovich? We'll talk about that in tomorrow's episode of Locked on Pelicans. See y'all then.